let's talk about possible data types within, um, within C Sharp. Um, I'm going to argue that the four most common data types that you're going to find are going to be the following. We have already seen how int uh, as a data type stands for integer, a number with no decimal part. So for example, uh, I can say num, this is going to be, uh, for example, number of items is going to be the value of 10. So because you cannot, usually you cannot have 3.7 items, I'm going to say, right? Uh, you can see that this is giving me a warning because I'm using, I'm declaring the variable, but I'm not using it anywhere. So for the time being, we can ignore that. The next type of variable that I'm going, that I think is going to be super, super common and you're going to find very often is going to be doubles. And doubles are numbers that do have a decimal part and that also, which also have a lot of precision. So for example, I can write here the value of pi and I can say 3.14, 15, 9, etc., etc. Okay. Now, the probably the most important and the most fundamental uh, data type that you're going to find in computer science is going to be Boolean data types. Uh, like, like, like this. And I think, yeah, I, sorry, I, I switched a lot between different languages. I never remember. So bool is the data type for Boolean values and Boolean values are values that can only have the value of true or false. It cannot get any simpler than that. So for example, in my case, let's say is professor and I would write here true. Uh, bool is a student. So right now, I'm not a student anymore, so I can write false. And you can see that in C Sharp, we have these special keywords called true and false that do have this special meaning of being true, false, one or zero. They're not variables anymore. All right. Um, and last but not least, a super, super common uh, data type that you're going to use a lot to represent text is going to be the data type string. A string means a string of characters, one after the other. Um, and for example, let's say that I'm going to create a variable called message. And that I, this message, I'm, I want to say, hello, world. All right. The thing with, uh, with this is that whenever we write words, just words on uh, C Sharp in the in Visual Studio, uh, by default, C Sharp is going to believe that these words are representing variables, which means that um, because we have not declared any variable called hello or, or world, uh, that's why it's giving me this error. So just a reminder that when we want to represent text data inside of C Sharp, we need to use double quotes. We need to wrap everything that is uh, that text data inside of double quotes. Okay. Um, yes. So these are the four, but arguably what I believe are going to be the four most popular and most common data types that you're going to be using. Uh, but let me take a break because I want to add a few other data types that you may actually encounter if you're looking at other people's code, or you may need them for some reason. So I have added like a few more data types that I think are not very common. Um, at least at, at a beginner level, but you, that you may also find. So for example, um, sometimes you will find bytes. Bytes are uh, basically an integer value that goes from minus 128 to 127, or if it's unsigned, then it goes from zero to 255. If you are familiar, for example, with um, um, image editing software or colors represented with code, you know that gray for example, grayscales usually go from 0 to 255 just because um, an 8-bit value, so one byte of information, has eight zeros and ones. And so 2 to the power of 8 is 256. And that's why uh, a byte of data is can only store 256 different values. That's just it. It's like a very cheap, uh, very small number. Um, there is also the data type called float is very common when you want to store um, data, uh, when you want to store numbers with decimal part, but you don't need a lot of precision. Uh, so these are typically represented with an F after the number and then are very popular, for example, when you store 
um, points, when you store points in, um, in a mesh, you typically don't really need the, a lot of precision in the coordinates of the vertices of that mesh. Um, but because meshes are really large, if you double the precision, then you basically double the size of the mesh. So typically coordinates for vertices in a mesh are stored as float values, for example. Um, long is also a special type of integer. It's an integer that can actually store a very, very large number. So it has twice, it has like double the amount of memory in, 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 in memory, which means that it can store very large integer numbers. Longs are very typically used, for example, for storing um, timestamps, which is the way time is represented in, in computers by basically storing how many seconds have elapsed since January 1st, 1970. That's what's, um, that's usually referred to as the Unix timestamps and it's the most common way of representing time in computers with long, um, with long um, variables. And chars or cars, I'm not sure how to pronounce that, uh, are also meant for storing text, but they can only store one single character. So it's a very cheap way of, a, of a storing text. Um, and just a heads up, remember that when you do chars, you have to use single quotes as opposed to double quotes in C sharp. In other programming languages, it's a little different. Okay. So, so those are, I think, a lot of different types that you're going to find in your programming life. And then, um, and then last but not least, what is this useful for? Well, Whenever now, whenever you declare a variable and then whenever you use that variable anywhere else in your code, then what you're basically doing is you're asking the computer to go to that memory address that you had a name for, look at what the value of that variable is at that point in the life of the program and then give it back to you. So for example, if I write to the console, the variable items, then what I get in the console is not going to be the word items because I am not using double quotes here. What I'm getting is the value that is stored inside of items, right? So let me, so similarly, if instead of that, what I write here to the console is, let me write the, the value of um, pi, for example. Right, uh, and if I run this code now, you will see that what I get is 10 and then 3.14, 15, 6, etc. If I print to the console the value of, um, of atoms, you're going to see that I get this really large number printed here on the console. And if I print to the console the value of um, message, which I believe was hello world, then you're going to see here this text that we had stored inside of the um, inside of the um, of the message variable. All right. So very important. Variables are a way to find memory in your computer. Give it a name that you can reuse through the life of the program, and then store some value inside of that variable. All right. And it is particular to C sharp that when you declare a variable, you have to specify which type of information you're going to store in that variable, and that will not be able to change. You cannot change that after um, you have declared that variable. All right. You can also not declare two variables with the same name um, in the same scope. All right. We will see that in more detail very soon. Let's take a look about Let's take a closer look at the rules of declaring and assigning different values for a particular variable. Stay tuned for the next video.